Hey, what's going on, man? What's going on, family? It's your boy Adewale, man. I'm back at you guys with another boxing talk today, man. Like, um, today is a is especially exciting day for me because um, Femi Oyelaye scored a fifth round KO. That's what happened, man. His fight with um, um, Jose Ramon. Bro, I'm always forgetting those guys' names, man. Those Mexican guys, to be honest. But yeah, man, this fight with the Mexican dude yesterday, um, May 11th in Tijuana, um, Baja, California. Excellent fight, man. Like, um, first of all, I'm just gonna quickly uh, give a quick breakdown of what happened. So, in the third round, Femi caught um, um, Jose with a wicked left uppercut man for me he's a southpaw stance fighting guy right just have that in mind and um this guy was coming in i think it was in the middle of a combination and femi just threw that uppercut like whew, boom that homeboy went down man clean that was the first knockdown that femi scored and then right from the first round of the fight he was already touching this dude all over like um did you seem like a good fighter too man i mean he kept on coming he kept on coming and he wasn't backing down and um, for some reason, I don't know, man. He looked good. He didn't look like his record states because he currently has um, seven five and one. He took another loss yesterday um, from Femi, and prior to that, it was seven four and one, right? But his performance in the ring seemed a little bit good, even though I can't even give the guy any round out of the five rounds that the fight lasted. Femi won all five rounds, right? He dropped him in the third round, knocked him out in the fifth round. And it was excellent, man. Femi has a lot of things to learn, that that's for sure, because, I mean, he's still in the early stages of his career. But still, with that performance that he had, I mean, man, the sky is the limit for this young man, man. Like, this guy has good combinations. He has very... The, the only thing I think he's lacking to an extent so far from yesterday's performance is uh, maybe his footwork. Like he wasn't using his legs so much like I was expecting him to do. But but then again, man, he's fighting, he's fought a lot of Mexicans in his young professional career. So you tend to adjust to their style of fighting. And a lot of those guys, they fight foam boot style, man. They bring the fight to you. They're pounding to the body, pounding to the head, uppercuts on the inside. And um, that was the kind of fight Femi and um, Jose fought yesterday, right? But most importantly, huge congrats to Femi Oyeleye. He has um, improved his professional record to 11 and 0 with five knockouts. Excellent, man! Like I'm so happy about about the fight. I I actually watched it on um, on a streamed platform of um, Jab Promotions on their Facebook page. So I'm gonna leave a link. Um, to that video in this um, video, right? Excellent fight. It was interesting. You guys that want to support Femi Oyelaya, you want to support um, up-and-coming African brothers that are in the boxing game, man, click on our link, watch the fight, drop a comment, you know, follow this guy on his um, Instagram page, um, at Boxing one Good fighter, man. I'm happy for him. Sky is the limit. So I'm going to go into the next fight that I actually watched. Um, and, and this one, man, yo, I was unhappy about this one, honestly. Between Dagboe and Neverati, there were so many things in that fight that just made it look like um, it was a pure mismatch. In actual fact, it was a pure mismatch, but within the context of boxing and how these fighters can uh, take advantage of certain boxing rules, it was also a pure mismatch. I mean, how do you how do you put a guy five foot two against a guy five foot seven? with similar um, skill levels, similar stamina, similar um, punch output abilities, and you know, just similar attributes. The only difference between these two guys is, one guy is way bigger than the other guy. So those are the ingredients for a pure mismatch. And that's exactly what happened in that fight between um, Dagboe and Neverati. I feel like Neverati, he shouldn't be fighting in 122 pounds, but he's able to make the weight according to the rules of the sport of boxing you know when it comes to the um um day before fight weigh-in or 30 days before fight weigh-in all those kind of stuffs um, depends on what sanctioning body um, body's belt you're fighting for right but then again um it gives these guys the opportunity to be able to meet up with the requirements for that particular fight and then get on with the fight but the fuck up with the whole thing there is that um, um the smaller guy 
he isn't supposed to be in the same weight class as the bigger guy like pure like there is no argument about that because at the end of the day that boy had everything it was he was fighting good it was going on the inside using using um body punches to attack Neverate. he had some success he probably won a couple of rounds in a fight but that was it man now Neverate dominated him thoroughly beat him up blue black from pillar to post knocked him down a couple of times like it, it was it was embarrassing man the most annoying thing about the fight for me was the fact that paul that boy um isaac that boy's dad man that homeboy shit man he was acting to in his head man like like he was trying to, to be 100 percent in control of the situation i mean he might as well have just gone into the ring and put on the gloves and fought never at it for for isaac man that shit was pissing me off because he's the reason why isaac took so much punishment two fights back to back first fight against Neverati, second fight against Neverati. Neverati put hands on this boy like crazy you know it, it was this kind of situation where you're fighting against a guy that you know this guy is never going to stop coming he's going to continue coming until you take him out if you're not able to knock this guy out he's not going to stop coming that was the kind of fight isaac that boy was fighting in my opinion that fight should have been stopped in the eighth round maximum the ninth round because there was really no point in having your fighter in this case his son right i'm talking about paul paul that boy right now there was no reason having your son your fighter taking so much punishment even though he has damn well lost all the rounds prior to that position and then you let him keep going just because you believed in the back of your mind that maybe he's gonna land a lucky punch that, that didn't make any sense man this young man is only 25 years old now he has taken so much beating that has probably now i'm gonna quote the words of my brother um um the real ghana world boxing that has taken about eight years out of his professional career like that those two fights he had against the variety they've put too much mileage on this boy's clock man that's too much like i wasn't happy about it now, at the end of the day man isaac that boy is a good fighter he was saying some crazy thing about wanting to move up in weight after that i'm like in my mind i'm like man bro don't don't even think about it man you're supposed to be thinking the other way around move down in weight because man you can't even deal with neverati and you want to move up in weight to guys that are bigger than you nah man don't do that bro like i just hope he he hasn't taken too much um um injuries in his brain and that kind of stuff because this guy shit man he ate so many punches was getting punched to the face to the head to the chin to the eyes nose mouth ears all over his body man he was destroyed he was getting destroyed but he has so much chin he has so much um heart you know and those were the factors that kept on pushing him to continue coming back and taking those punches to the face he had a few success here and there you know he was going to the body at first and then he threw that away all of a sudden he was just trying to launch in with the punches and that wasn't working man like i feel like um his trainer slash father did not have a good game plan going into that fight for him right and um the only way that the um i see isaac that boy bouncing back from his current predicament is he actually has to um reduce the relationship between himself and his dad in the sport of boxing I understand that his dad is a trainer he has experience in the sport of boxing but sometimes these father-son relationships are not the best for the fighters because um, they can only take you so far when you get to the elite level all right where you need to do away with emotions man father-son relationships where the father has always been the coach and the son is the fighter it, it becomes a disadvantage in most in many cases that i've seen in the sport of boxing all right so i feel like at this point paul that boy needs to take a step back let isaac go get another trainer a very good trainer man get another trainer get a proper game plan and man if you're going to remain in that division man you have a lot of work to do to bounce back bro that's just the truth but man i still support isaac that boy that boy um congratulations to neverati he did what he had to do to secure the victory and that's the most important thing right and then the third fight was between jared heard and j rock williams man man i also seen that fight at the end of the day shit that was a good fight that was a very good fight man 
fight of the year candidate I'm, I'm assuming that fight is going to win one of those nominations and stuff because it was entertaining all through man j rock williams a lot of people have been sleeping on this dude but man no the guy is the truth man like he made J jared hurt look like a regular guy you know jared hurt didn't look like the jared hurt that i thought it was and you know this is one of the things that makes the sport of boxing really interesting when you're unable to um really um pinpoint one or two people that are head above shoulders the red rest of the division that makes it better man if you have a high level of competition amongst the top guys in the, in the division right and then the guy that you think is the best he takes a loss to another guy and then you think that other guy is the best and that other guy takes another loss to someone else that just makes the sport of boxing interesting right so right now arguably i can say the 154 pound division is one of the best one of the most exciting in in, in boxing just because first of all we had it as um jared hurt that he was the best guy in the division and then some other people had it as jamel charlo charlo took a loss to tony harrison now it's like harrison is one of the best guys right and then hurt took a loss to j rock williams so now it's like j rock williams is the best I, I don't know man anybody has a chance to be the best right now right it's between it's still amongst those four five six guys you know heard williams harrison um charlo even um this guy um uh, lara arizlani lara and um jamie mongiel i don't know what's up with him man the guys in that um top rank guys that hold the wbo title period man the title is a little bit sidelined they they hardly mix that title with the rest of the division but we'll see how that goes man i don't even know where i rank jimmy mongel to be honest because he hasn't really fought anybody that i consider to be one of the top 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 guys you know what i'm saying so it is what it is man but yeah man last night was a great night of boxing um femi oyele has secured his victory that was excellent um isaac dagboy lost to neverate for the second time that was sad to see but congrats to Neverate, he did what he had to do to win. And Isaac Dagwe, in my opinion, he needs to absolutely overhaul his team. His father needs to take a step back from his career and let that boy progress, man. Why, why do you put that guy through so much punishment? And then at the end of the fight, um, Dagwe is about to talk on the post-fight um, interview inside the ring. And the father is stepping up there trying to tell him what to say. I'm like, bro, man, why didn't you just stop the fight earlier? Why are you trying to make what why are you trying to have full control of this guy's life? And it's it's totally understandable, man. He's your son, so you are emotionally attached and you're trying to um, have the best situation for him. But you're not doing it the wrong the right way, man. You need to go about it in a better fashion, period. And then the third fight between J. Rock Williams and um, Jared Hurd, it was an upset. That's what people say. But I think Jared Williams thoroughly deserved that victory he fought very well his post-fight interview was it was a little bit emotional i was i'm really happy for that man man i'm not even gonna deny he deserves the victory as a matter of fact right now if he defends that title one time man his status is gonna shoot to the top straight up pr probably top 10 pound for pound kind of status you know what i'm saying so with that being said man thank you guys for watching the video good good night of boxing may 11th 2019 peace out y'all